Hey there, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are going to be learning about Scylla DB. Before doing a simple hands on lab, let's take a look at a short one minute video on what is Scylla DB. Scylla DB is the monstrously fast and scalable database for data intensive apps that require high performance and low latency. Trusted by companies like Comcast, Disney Plus Hotstar, Starbucks, Discord, and Zillow, it's capable of millions of operations per second at gigabyte to petabyte scale. SillyDB easily grows with your business and data. SillyDB is designed for always on high availability and reliability. There's no single point of failure. SillyDB's shard per core architecture takes advantage of highly scalable modern servers, providing superior TCO and ROI. Designed to be compatible with Cassandra and DynamoDB APIs, you can switch your workloads over to SillaDB seamlessly. Get started today by going to SillaDB.com. That's S-C-Y-L-L-A-D-B.com. All right, so hopefully that gave you a good understanding on what is SillaDB. Let's get a simple hands-on lab. So we're going to spin up SillaDB using Docker Compose. So here you can see I'm going to be using uh, Scylla image 4.6.0. So come to the project rep uh, repository and issue a command Docker Compose up hyphen hyphen build minus D. This will start the Scylla container on uh, your machine locally. All right, so now the containers are up and running and we can do a simple hands-on lab. All right, so sharing my screen, open up your Docker desktop, click on the running container and go to exec and fire a command cqlsh. This will uh, launch uh, the, the shell terminal. And now what you need to do is you will be given a file called de uh, demo.sql. We're gonna create a key space. And after that, we're gonna use this key space called my key space. And now just like you would regularly create a table, right? I'm gonna create a table called user, which has a user ID, name, and an age. After that, just like regular SQL, you can insert data using insert into command. As you can see, I'm inserting three user, uh, that is Alice, Bob, and Charlie. You see, uh, you can of course read data. As you can see, I can read the data now. Uh, similarly, updating is similar to uh, how you would do in other database. So update the table name, and then we are setting the age to 31 for the user one. So if you see user one age is 30, right? So I'm gonna simply paste the command. Okay, done. And now let's verify if that update was successful. Perfect, look at that, that's updated. All right, so deleting is also similar, delete from the table name and you can provide a condition. And that record must be gone now with user two. There you go, the record is gone. Now let's take a look at how you can interact with uh, SillaDB using the Python client. Now to get started with the Python client, you will need to install this particular Python package, Cassandra driver. So pip install Cassandra driver. And uh, as you can see, I already have that on my machine. Uh, so I have a very simple code. So from Cassandra.cluster import cluster, as you can see, I have a main function where I define, since it's running locally, it's localhost, right? I define my key space called my key space, which we already created. And now we are in doing the same thing. We are inserting three user, Alice, Bob, and Charlie. And in Python, you will just do it simply with an insert command. So insert into the table name and then the values, right? And you're providing the values over here. After insert, we do the same update command as you can see. So update the name of the table we give a set condition and of course uh, there you go so we can update that particular user and then at the end we delete user number two so same exercise what we de uh, did in demo.sql we are doing that in python now right so same thing okay so now if i go python 3 lab 1 oops i think i need to be in lab 1 so cd lab 1 and then i'm gonna say python 3 lab 1.py and here you can see we were able to insert the mock data, we were able to update the mock data, and we were able to delete the mock data, and then we are able to print the mock data from SillaDB. So it's literally that easy. Now let me also show you how you can read data from SillaDB using PySpark, right? So hopefully that will be a good uh, hands-on lab, uh, hello world lab uh, in general. 
So here I define my Spark session and here I create a Spark uh, object over here as you can see on line number four. Here I define uh, the host is localhost and the port is 9042. After that I simple write spark.read.format odd.apache.spark.sql.cassandra key space I give it a key space name and the table name. Remember this already exists because we ran the previous labs right and then we're just doing dot show. Now uh, let's see how to run this. So I have a command here. So we're gonna be using a spark submit command and this is the package we would need. Uh, dot com dot data stacks dot spark colon spark hyphen Cassandra hyphen connector underscore 2.12 colon 3.4.0. So the last one that you see, you will change based on the uh, Spark version. I use Spark 3.4 on my machine, right? And this is the Python file name, okay? So let's see if you are able to read the data from uh, for, 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 uh, using Spark now. So I just did that. This will take a couple of seconds. I will simply try to, there you go. I'm able to read that uh, data uh, from uh, CLRDB. So yeah, quick, uh, quick start guide, right? I hope uh, this was useful. Um, the snippets, so in case if you wanna try other items out, I would leave the material such as the Docker Compose file, the sample Python file to insert data into CLRDB. So all those commands are there. So beginners uh, can, you know, simply try this out on your machine. Uh, all you need is simply Docker and Python. I will make some more videos on CLRDB, uh, you know, more data ingestion and more some of the project videos. But this should be a good starting point for you. Hey, what is CLRDB and how do I get started as a beginner? Thank you so much for watching the video and I will see you in the next video.